we could represent the process of finding the chromatic polynomial of a graph using a graph. A tree, in fact, whose leaves correspond to complete graphs. While the spatial location doesn't matter, let's put the node to the left if it keeps the same number of vertices, and to the right if the number of vertices decreases. So in our previous example, we added an edge to produce graph 1, which had the same number of vertices. So we'll put a node corresponding to graph 1 to the left, and then we merged along that edge to produce graph 2, which had one fewer vertex. So we'll put a node corresponding to graph 2 to the right. Next, we took graph 1 and added an edge, giving us graph 3, which has the same number of vertices, so we'll put the corresponding node to the left. Then contracting along that edge gives us graph 4, which has one fewer vertex, so we'll put a corresponding node to the right, and note that this is also K5. Adding an edge to graph 3 produces K6, and contracting along that edge produces K5. Meanwhile, from graph 2, we'll add an edge, giving us graph 7, and contract, giving us graph 8, which is also K4. Finally, graph 7, we can add an edge to get graph 9, which is also K5, and contract to get graph 10, K4. Note that we eventually end up with Kn's as the leaf vertices, and this leads to the following theorem. The chromatic polynomial for a graph on n vertices can be expressed as a linear combination of the chromatic polynomials of Kn. Since the chromatic polynomial for Kn will be the descending factorial polynomial, then it's going to be greater than 0 for t greater than or equal to n. Moreover, it's going to be equal to 0 for any whole number less than n. Consequently, let the chromatic polynomial for G be expressed as above as a linear combination of the chromatic polynomials of Kn, and let K be the least value for which a k is non-zero. Then the chromatic number of our graph is k. For example, suppose G has chromatic polynomial. We can find the chromatic polynomial of the graph. Note that the chromatic polynomial for k4 will be 0 if t is 0, 1, 2, or 3. And the chromatic polynomial for k3 will be 0 if t is 0, 1, or 2. And this means the chromatic polynomial for g will be 0 for t equals 0, 1, or 2. So there are no 1 or 2 colorings. But since our chromatic polynomial for k3 is 6, we know there are 3 colorings, and so our chromatic number is 3. In general, finding the chromatic polynomial of a graph isn't difficult, but it does require a lot of steps. So in practice, finding the chromatic number from the chromatic polynomial is inefficient. But if Kn appears anywhere in our process, we obtain an upper bound on the chromatic number. For example, let's try to find an upper bound on the chromatic number of this graph. By adding edges and merging vertices, we obtain K4. So our chromatic number is less than or equal to 4. Now the process of creating an edge and merging the vertices will eventually lead to Kn, and at every step we decrease the number of vertices by 1. This also reduces the potential bound, so to give us the best possible bound, we'll try to avoid producing Kn 
for as long as we can. While we can merge any two non-adjacent vertices, it's often useful to consider extreme cases. This also helps us create an algorithm since the method of choosing the vertices is part of the process. In this case, we might choose the two non-adjacent vertices of highest degree or the two non-adjacent vertices of lowest degree. Suppose we join two vertices of degrees D1 and D2. The merge vertex might have a degree as high as D1 plus D2 if they're adjacent to completely different sets of vertices. Meanwhile, the degrees of the other vertices will decrease by 1 if the vertex is adjacent to both, or stay the same if the vertex is adjacent to one or none of the merged vertices. In Kn, all vertices have the same degree and it is the greatest degree possible. Since merging two vertices of the lowest degree will eliminate some low degree vertices, it might bring us to Kn faster. So let's try merging vertices of highest degree. So let's take a look at our graph again. And we note that vertices 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 all have degree 3, and since 4 and 5 are non-adjacent, we'll join them with an edge, then contract along the edge, and for reasons to be made clear later, we'll label the merged vertices with a merged label. Now this new vertex 4, 5 has degree 5. The non-adjacent vertex with highest degree is 7, so we join them, then contract along the edge. Now, while vertex 4, 5, 7 has highest degree, it's actually adjacent to every other vertex. So vertex 2 has highest degree, and the highest degree non-adjacent vertex is either 6 or 8. So we'll join 2 to 6 and merge. Now 2, 6 is the highest degree vertex that isn't adjacent to all other vertices. The highest degree vertex that isn't adjacent to it is 8, so we join them and merge. The only remaining non-adjacent vertices are 1 and 3, so we join and merge. This gives us K3, and so our chromatic number is less than or equal to 3. Note that we can work our way backwards to a coloring by expanding the graph. Remember, we merged non-adjacent vertices. So if we unmerge, the restored vertex can have the same color as the vertex it was merged to. Since we kept track of which vertices merged, we can recover a coloring. Vertices 1 and 3 are the first color. Vertices 2, 6, and 8 are the second color. And vertices 4, 5, and 7 are a third color. So going back to our original graph, we'll assign vertices 1 and 3 the first color. We'll assign 2, 6, and 8 a second color. And 4, 5, and 7 get the third color. 